This morning I want to speak to you on this vital topic of endurance, perseverance. And I would simply say that we are called to endure and to remember that our reward is sure. It, it's sure, it's guaranteed in Christ. And so if I had a caption for this brief meditation, it would simply be hold on, hold on. And when I think about holding on, I think in particular about the story of Job, the patriarch in the Old Testament. And in this particular story, which really, really encourages me quite a bit, we find out that Job was a man who experienced great pain and sorrow. Great pain and sorrow. And when I compare some of the things that I would have considered are the most, I mean, painful experiences of my life, okay? And I compare them with what Joe went through. You know, I end up at the, at, at the conclusion really rejoicing over the pain I've got because the pain I've got, the injury that I have suffered, listen, it's nothing compared to what some of the patriarchs and the biblical characters went through. And this morning, in particular, when it comes to Job. So there is no need, at least for me, and I would suggest also for you, to be engaged in a pity party. A pity party, simply moping over what's going on and what's going wrong in our lives. It's a drop in the bucket compared to what Job went through. And I suggest when you get the opportunity that you fully contemplate that story as I hit just the high point this morning. Job was a faithful man. He was blameless and upright, and yet he attracted such evil to him. He served God. He was diligent as a follower of God. Satan wanted to prove a point to God, so he tested Job. He tortured Job. God allowed it for his glory. And a lot of the stuff that we're going through, I suggest we take the perspective that what we're going through that's against us has nothing so much to do about us. It's about God's glory coming through. The only restriction God placed on Satan was that he could not take his life. In the course of one day, Job was told by different servants that all his belongings and possessions, livestock and assets, and ten, ten children had been destroyed by natural disasters or thieves. Despite all this, Job still praised God, even in his sorrow. And again, the question is, like Longfellow say, as in every life, some rain must fall. When our time comes, a deluge of pain and suffering and agony and ill health, the question is, are we still able to praise God from whom all blessings flow? Next, we find that Job was afflicted with terrible illness, skin sores, yet he continued to do what he could in terms of praising and serving his God. He didn't let these experiences to uh, simply amount to reasons that he could not continue keeping on. Despite the terrible advice friends offered him, all the evil they perpetrated about him, guess what? Job did not become bitter. Job praised God in all of it, even when he knew that people around him did not have his interest at heart. He didn't get angry. He didn't get upset. He simply cast himself at the mercy 
seat of God. God eventually intervened as he will in our lives. So what he's simply doing in many instances with us, God is simply testing. He is testing. He's testing our faith. He is testing our perseverance. He's testing our endurance. He is building up in all of that characters, not just for time, but characters that will be ready for eternity. Yes, which is amazing further to me, when we consider all that was perpetrated against Job by evildoers around him, guess what? Even when Job knew and saw through those who were around him coming on as if they were friends and supporters, when in fact they were simply just trying to destroy Job, Job knew all of that. Job could have simply tried to take vengeance out on them or he could have simply acted with revenge. But instead, guess what Job did? Job blessed his friends, his so-called friends, I should say. And Job asked God to have mercy on them. Yes, as the Apostle Paul says, when uh, we are in situations, uh, uh, the target of malice, the, the brunt of ill motives and intentions, uh, Paul says that we should heap up coals of love. Uh, love our enemies. Pray for them that despitefully use us for God's glory. God had mercy on Job, and when Job passed the test, Job restored his health and all his possessions, granting him twice as much as he had in the past. More children. Uh, we may say, well, you know, God, hold that one. Uh, you know, we got enough, or we had enough, but no, no, no. Children, children are a heritage of the Lord. Yes. And uh, the, the, the fruit of the womb is his reward. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And in addition, God gave Job a long and prosperous life. When it would appear that Job's life was about to be snuffed out. Yes, it's just a test. Whatever you're going through, it's just a test. Hey, trust God. Through it all, you will see uh, the sun come through, even though you may have to uh, soil your pillows with uh, tears of concern and agony. Guess what? It is still true. Weeping might endure, but for a night, if we hold on with Jesus Christ, joy cometh in the morning. And so the ultimate test of your life is the test of faith god give us grace to persevere and in the end god says the reward of your faith is assured hold on my friend hold on my brother hold on my sister this is just a test your reward is assured god bless you oh god keep you God sustain you. God be gracious unto you. God lift up the light of his countenance upon you. God give you his peace in the midst of your storm. God in your vessel give you reason to smile. God give you the positivity to look at adversity as having a greater purpose to demonstrate God's glory. This is my prayer for all of you, my beloved family, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, our Savior, the Alpha and Omega, in his wonderful name for his cause, and everybody says, Amen.